the right and a tomb on the other side. Or Now then, you, you're beginning to get the picture. Yes. Let's start with the sky. It, there's a strong contrast in the sky between dark, stormy clouds on one side and lighter but turbulent clouds behind the building. It's like a sky in conflict because it's as if a storm has passed, but the sky is ready to boil up again, set the stage for another storm. This is the atmosphere. Then we look at the tree. Part of it's living, part of it's dead. And the tree is of a greenish brown and leaf color. The branches are dead. It appears to be uprooted. It has the colors of rot and mm. decay. I now hope the painting is not as eloquent as your description because it must be shuddery to look at. Now let's move on to the man-made things. Okay. You can see a turbulent sky, a dying tree. We look at the buildings. If we look at the, the building in ruins, we see that it looks like it had been a church of some sort. Built of stone, which was durable and built to last. But it did not last. It's in ruins. Parts have fallen. If we look at the tomb, we see that the marble is cracked, it's mottled, it's smeared. There's a dying tree next to it. The painting is full of murky weeds and fallen grave markers. This is the general description of it. Now, what is it saying to us about man and life? Can you come up with something, Leonard? Well, it certainly is not a happy uh, viewpoint. It seems to be saying that there's a clash between good and evil or, or, or life and death, and death is winning, and the good is putting up a futile struggle, but it's going to finally uh, be wiped out, and death is going to overcome everything, and that's the most important thing. I'm just taking a wild guess, but that's... No, what's... but you, you're on the, on the right track. What it's saying is that man-made values are threatened and they're doomed by destructive forces in nature. Nothing that man makes lasts. Everything is ephemeral. Man can put great things on earth, but they will not endure. Nothing endures. Only the elements of nature. So that's a kind of platonic theme that, uh, that all the things of this world are transitory and... Uh, uh, if we want absolutes, would, would he be implying if we want to look for something real and e eternal, we'd have to look to another world, or is he not religious? I don't know. I, and I think that you can't make that assumption on okay. the basis of this. Okay. But you see, what he does is he makes objective this, these ideas by means of physical concrete, by what he chooses, where he puts it, what he emphasizes, what colors he uses. And here again, if you said to him, well, look, but you know that some days the skies are sunny and some buildings are not in ruins and some trees are perfectly healthy and some places have a, a lawn for dancing and not a tomb, he would say, yes, I'm sure all of that exists. But as with the sculpture case, that is not what reality is all about, right? Yeah, that's not the essence of life. So that his selectivity comes in picking those things which tell you what the true essence of life is. As he sees it. As he sees it. Oh, of right. course. Yeah, that's what you mean by a selective his, recreation according to his basic value judgment. His view of life is the standard that determines all things he selects and how he presents them. Well, I, I think you've made that definition crystal clear to me. Uh, on line seven, uh, Jose, are you there? Jose, on line seven? Hello, hello? Hello? Are you there, Jose? Yes, hi there. How are you doing? How okay, are you? now, I don't want you to push us into a whole bunch of new topics, but on this question of what is art, do you have a question for Mrs. Suries? Well, yes. Go uh, ahead. How about the, the expression of political ideology, um, ideology, theology, or just basically the glorification of uh, depravity or something? that is expressed in art. In other words, I don't view art as just an expression of one's own values. I view art as the means to an end to achieve a uh, political idea, to expound uh, certain uh, uh, 
theological values on, on society. Do so uh, you see it as more didactic or propagandistic to convert an audience to a viewpoint? Exactly. Okay, know. Jose. Thank you for your question, and uh, I'd like you to take the answer off the air, and I'll give Mrs. Ceres a chance to discuss it. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Okay. Mary Ann? Well, discuss that issue? Yes. I, I, he, well, he, when he talks about uh, political ideas, theological ideas, those are <clears throat> issues that are too narrow for art. They really belong in treatises or propaganda posters. Art deals with something much more fundamental. But doesn't some art have a political or theological content? Yes. Much so, of it does. So uh, do, well, theological what, content would you say, art. Would you say to that extent he's right about those pieces? Like mm -hmm. if, if a work of art uh, advocates uh, uh, socialism, uh, would you say, well, to that extent the message is political and not really a recreation of reality according to basic value well, judgment? Uh, if it's a work of art the basic value judgments that will prevail, that will in fact determine what kind of scene he shows. Could be a social realist, for example. Yes. And they, they would focus on certain types of activities among men. They would make, perhaps want to focus on the downtrodden in life, to show how unfair and unjust life is in a, in a capitalist society. Right. But these are secondary issues to basic values. So you do not think that art is didactic. It's, not, it's essential purpose is not to, to give a message. No. Because... Not narrow political or theological yes. messages. Because, uh, after all, that's what the purpose of nonfiction treatises is. Exactly. So, so what is the difference then if it's... They, they have some kind of message, obviously. I mean, they tell you something about reality according to the way the artist sees it, but they're not out to, co to, to convert you to the message. So how, what role does... The message play, pe people were saying yesterday that there's some kind of message in a work of art, but it's not trying to, to, to argue for that message. So uh, how, what is happening? What is happening is that the artist's purpose is not to convert us, not really to communicate, but merely to put his basic values in concrete form in which they can be contemplated. In other words, sort of like directly experienced. Exactly. Anything that you might learn from a work of art is secondary. Art does not have as the purpose to teach. It has the purpose to show men what is important in life, what things they should look at, what things they should contemplate. But with the emphasis on show rather than tell. Exactly. They're giving us the experience of actually seeing reality the way they see it. Yes. And then we can either say, yes, that's the way I see it too, and affirm the piece of art, or say, oh, no, that's anathema, that's horrible, I don't see things that way, and reject it. Right. Well, now, you've made very clear what the artist does, but then the question becomes, wh why is this important in life? I mean, uh, is this just a luxury for people who don't have... Anything much to do with their time? Could we do without this? Why is it important that we experience uh, somebody else's view of uh, reality? Why do we need art, you're asking? Yes. Is it a luxury? No. Art is a necessity. An actual necessity of human life? Yes. I mean, like, like food, in effect? Well, no. It doesn't pertain to his physical survival. But it pertains, let's say, to his spiritual survival. See, when we talk about basic values, the views of man and of life, we're talking about something very profound and complex. And yet it's important to man because these basic values lie at the root of all of his other values, all of his choices, all of his actions. Few men can identify the content of their basic values. But all men have them, they live by them, they act by them. Mm -hmm. And the sole human activity in which the primary concern is to give physical expression to these ideas is the activity of art. So it kind of makes visible to you the subterranean program by which you run your life, yes. uh, which you never really get a chance to investigate, and it brings it up from your soul and x-rays it, puts it out there for you to look at, 
and to respond to, and I guess if it's that crucial to your life, you would need to have some way of affirming, yeah, my basic program is right or my basic program is wrong. You'd have to have some way of checking on it if yes, you're going to have... Right, and more than just checking on it. You have to have some way to have it in the forefront of your mind at times because it is so basic, because so much is involved in it. If I were to ask you, give me in um, a thousand words the essence of life, the meaning of life, you couldn't come near to completing the assignment. Well, I could do it in three words, but, uh, you know, life, life is a bowl of cherries or something, but it would be so vague that it wouldn't say anything. And superficial. Right. As to be meaningless. But I can point to a statue. Mm -hmm. I can point to a painting and say, yes, there, that's the meaning of life to me. That's what's important. That's why, you know, the saying is a picture is worth a thousand words. Yes. yes. And man needs to see it because he's in danger of losing that perspective of what's important. So many things can happen in one's life that one can't control. He needs the power to summon his basic values and to reaffirm them. He has to see them. And that's why art is vital to survival. <laughs> Three. My name is Leonard Peikoff, and we're on the phone today with Marianne Suries, a distinguished art historian. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you who joined the program at 3 o'clock, and we are talking about what is art and why is it so important. Uh, Ms. Suries has given us as Ayn Rand's definition of art as a selective recreation of reality, according to the artist's basic value judgments. And in essence, uh, Mrs. Series, you're saying, if I have you correctly, and I'm sure I do, that the artist looks at reality as it is. He selects, he decides certain things are really important. They tell you the true nature of reality, and other things are maybe true, but they're superficial, they're accidental, they don't really mean anything. And he strips away the superficial things and then presents man or a, a seascape or a story, whatever it is, in such a way as to bring out the essence of his value judgments and that this is really important uh, to people. In fact, you say indispensable uh, because it kind of takes the basic value judgments that they hold and don't know that they hold and brings them up in a form that they can experience by direct uh, eyesight or earsight if it's music, and then they are able to have it confirmed that, yes, this is reality the way I see it, or no, it isn't. Is that a fair summary? Yes. Now, you were going to tell me, we have a number of questioners on the line, and I want to get to them, but just, if you can, what, what do you want to say or have to say about where emotions come in? So many people think that art is an emotional issue, and you're saying it really it gives you reality according to your value judgments. Where do emotions come in here? When we talk about value judgments, we're talking about something so basic and important that the person experiences those judgments as a part of himself. And when he responds to a work of art, he is responding to the value judgments which that work of art projects, either in a painting or a statue, or it could be in a, in a novel. And because they're so basic in one's life, he experiences those emotions as something he must cling and hold on to. They are him. They cut to the core of his being. He's mm -hmm. experiencing an emotion about something very important to him. And is that why most people say they can't explain their reactions? Because actually the conclusions that, that, that lead to them are so basic that they can't even begin to remember forming them or, or, or figure out what they are? Oh, yes. You've heard, uh, and I have heard this many, many times, the statement, I don't know anything about art, but I know what I like. Yes. It's often said very defensively. People would be ignorant of why they like something. They've never given it any thought. But they will not give up the fact that they like it. And you believe that with proper uh, knowledge and introspection, you could figure out exactly why you like a work of art, what it says about reality, and why you uh, respond or don't. Oh, absolutely. It's work. It takes a great deal of introspection. 
but it can be done, and it is a very, very rewarding pastime. Now, give me... You, you see, you get in touch with yourself. 